Hey there, and welcome back to Elden Ring. We are going to be moving into the Carrion Manor now in search of, you know, the truth of the conspiracy and, like, maybe some stuff about Lunar Princess uh, Rani. Just, you know, secrets. Stuff. Like, what what's the deal, right? Uh, now, the Guidance of Grace is pushing us towards it, I believe. So, let's start marching in there, but we have to be careful because, like EG said... There's a snare, an enchantment that I kept at bay the soldiers of the cuckoo. Which, I mean, yeah, like, we're dodging this no problem as a singular person. But you could totally see how maybe a, like, a, a large force, a massed force, would have some issues here. Now, hopefully... No, I just want to read it. The resting place of the contemptible cuckoos lost in the siege of the manor. Okay. Yeah, contemptible. I mean, given how it kind of described them, how they're like rapacious manners when the uh, academy just kind of let them loose to do whatever they wanted. So, yeah, they don't seem to behave themselves very well, it seems. But now we're at main carrier manor gate. A lot of stuff to check out here. And look immediately what we have up ahead giant hands we've seen little hands before we saw them in the carrion study but they were not that size those do have rings on them we're going to kind of skirt the side for a smidge and see what's over this way there's blue flames i think it's tied with magic right not so much ghost flame Uh oh yeah you want some look at that jewel that he's got going on there the way they scuttle the weak spot being in the severed part of the hand that makes sense he's got like a purple jewel a bunch of the rings on the finger drop somber smithing stones so are these hand things somehow servants of the carrion family right oh and what do we have here Look at that. It's an Albanaric. Only he's all hooded up. He's got a staff. And he's going to cast magic. We have seen a magic casting one before as well. That was the uh, on the bridge right before we fought the Omen Killer. Glintstone Craftsman's Book Number 6. Freezing Pot. So the Freezing Pot is engraved with a crest of the Carrion Royals. Builds up frost. Originates from the cold dark moon of Rani, the Carrion Princess. Okay, so Rani has a dark moon, which is like the Eternal City had a dark moon, right? Look how there's like all this like glinting, gleaming blue in the air. Is that just from like large amounts of like sorcery and magic? Or does it have something to tie in with like night or something, right? Because we heard that with the... Uh, you know, in the cutscene, talking about weaving their night into being. There's a dark moon. Oh, Lord, that thing came out hard and fast. Uh, they do not like fire. They will burn for a second, which is kind of cool for us. And now it'll die. Maybe. Uh-oh, please poke it. Thank you. Got ourselves a beetle there, but if you kind of look, anytime there's something like that, it can often feel like a trap. And look how there's little spiky bits right past it. What could it possibly be, I wonder? It's blue for sorcery, and you can see little bits of the finger poking out there. So you know if we had, like, really followed, we'd have had something like that happen. Only with a big hand. I used to do a lot of invasions in here. I had a lot of fun in here. Now, it seems like we're kind of stuck down in this part for right now, but we may be able to move up there because there seems to be a whole section up here that we haven't quite been able to reach yet. Ah, oh, look at that thing. Look how it, like, it's, like, stroking and rubbing. It's, ugh, it's so nasty, man. Ugh. And, like, that little one, you can see it kind of, like, spreading out and, like, basking in like the air or something on and just like the grass it did some kind of spell at us if that had hit us it would have restricted our movement it would have held us in place uh, so we definitely did not want that to happen to us when we start moving in there are some bursts of crystals 
in and around the place. Moving in here, though, you know, some more. It looks a bit like a study. There's a ghost, though. Also, though, so thinking again about the, the princess, right? She did something, right? There was a ghost at the carrion study that was like, hey, hide her transgression. And now what have we found out? That she is a conspirator. She was like maybe the main conspirator and one who did the right for the Knight of Black Knives. So maybe that's what they wanted to be held secret. Lady Ronnie, we have long awaited you. I pray for your house's swift revival. May the full moon shine upon Caria. We get up here, and I mean, it's almost like a church. There seems to be a second level up there, too. There's a whole, it's a ladder as well, so we can get up there somehow. And some more of those statues we've seen before, like the woman. I mean, this looks like a kind of a churchy chapel area. Smithing stone, huh. The manor lower level. All right. Let's go ahead and advance. There's a lot of extra things we can get from this part right here, right? Like, if you take a lot of time looking, you'll eventually find that there's a lot of areas you can, like, hop down in. And it can take some time to, like, figure them all out. But once you, like, get it down, yeah, you, I mean, you'll get it. I wish I knew why. Why am I losing these frames? Is it the ghosts, like, uh, spawning? What, what's the deal? All right, two paths to go here. One over there leads this way up there. Looks like there's a stairway leading up, or we can go this way and check out what's happening here. All kinds of traps around too. Yeah, and you can see there's a drop down we could go to over there and a hole. So we're gonna go that way. So let's see what's down here. Sword of Night and Flame. Now, the coloration and stuff tells us this is a really rare, important item. Same way when we got, like, the Scrafted Blade or uh, another thing, one of the materials of sorts. Don't know why I'm going down this way because swords are up at the top. That's a fancy-looking sword as well. And look how it's, like, halved. Like, on the bottom half or the right half, there's, like, that blue one on the left is kind of, like, blackish-looking it's storied sword and treasure of Caria Manor, one of the legendary armaments. Astrologers who preceded the sorcerers established themselves in the mountaintops that nearly touched the sky and considered the fire giants their neighbor, their neighbors. And then you've got the unique skill Night and Flame Stance. Hold it level and prepare to cast a sorcery. You can follow it with a normal attack for the Night Comet or a strong attack to sweep forward with a burst of flame. So this says the astrologers preceded the sorcerers and established in the mountains and consider the fire giants their neighbors. And we know that the, there's like the mountaintops or something for these giants because we got these. Fertilized by the sparks from the forge at the peak where burns the flame of ruin. It's a half ashen smoldering flower that blooms on the mountaintops of giants. Now, I was sort of under the impression that the uh the astrologers were the heirs of glintstone sorcerers just based right on this right they read the fate in the stars and are said to be the heirs of the glintstone sorcerers because when somebody's an heir of somebody it's like they it's after them but the uh, the other thing the sword says they preceded them so maybe there's like a mistranslation of sorts or i'm just like misreading something in there now, it would kind of make sense that astrologers would, you know, precede the glintstone sorceries because you need to, like, observe the stars and, like, learn about them first before you can start, like, you know, learning these spells that, like, channel them. You know what I mean? So you would take the astrologers who read the stars, observe their movements, the comets, the shooting stars, or whatever, right? And then from there, when you've observed them and you've gleaned some truth and knowledge from it, then you could perform these spells that replicate them. Now, something is kind of interesting, and I didn't think about that is until now, right? So we're going up here and we're fighting these spirits. They're not like spirits of carrion knights. They're spirits of cuckoo soldiers, right? 
So why are there spirits of the cuckoo defending the carrion house? It's a little weird, right? So maybe there's something else going on. Now there's a spot for us to jump down over here. I can't remember if I just make this jump or if there's a better way for me to do it over there. I don't remember. Oh, right there. Maybe. We're gonna try. Yeah, golden. No problem. No sweat. Rhymed crystal bud. We haven't really talked about that one, I don't think. I don't remember if there's anything interesting. So we got crystal buds. Young plant crystallized before it could mature. Used for crafting items found on Lyrania Lake. And then the rhymed one frozen into a crystal before it could mature. And eh, nothing interesting. Urumi. It's a cool weapon. Uh, I used it on this, like, black flame person I did. Very fun. Very fun whip. Uh, it's cool because it is also, like, very much berserk. It's based on a real thing, too. Uh, made of extremely thin, flexible blades of metal wielded like a whip by night folk warriors. Though, in a sense, a whip with a cutting edge, it can also be used as a spear to pierce foes. Whip by night folk warriors. Night folk. Who are the night folk? And look right there. That's an iron virgin. That's what Patches was telling us about. Not the one specifically that he's talking about, but, you know, same idea. That's what it is. Only this one has spinning blades, which is not the same as what we've seen. We've seen the big sickle ones. It almost seemed to be asleep too, and then I got grabbed. <laughs> let go, let go, let go, let go. I didn't think it would grab so friggin' fast, dude. Ugh. There we go, that's a good hit. Okay, there we go. And then what do we find here? Somber smithing stone. Anything else? Is that really all that was here? I feel like there's something else. So we continued on the rest of that way on the bridge, right? All along here. And there was an elevator. It takes us all the way up where we can find our next side of grace. What is this one called? Probably manor upper level, right? Since the last one was the lower level. Yep, upper level. All right, so let's keep it going then. What's gonna be up here, I wonder? Golden little tree and a wolf. Now this wolf is different than a lot of the wolves that we see like, like just around, right? But it looks like that one Lobo that Latena had, right? Look how it has that shaggy fur, kind of a long tail. Now watch his movement, so. Look how it's kind of like, it's like kind of floaty in a way. Yeah, look how it kind of like, it just seems light. Like it's not fully, like that hop to the ground, like he was in the air for just a little too long. Like it's not, they just don't seem as weighted to the earth as I think they should be. Which is, I mean, maybe, I don't know how that makes sense, right? At all. And it's a game, and there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But like there's some that are, you know, coming out of the sky in Limgrave, so, you know, is that really to be unexpected? You know, who knows? And then we come up here, and what do we got? A full, like, blockade of dudes. We've got those uh, sorcerers that follow the carrion way, the moon, a troll knight. You can actually see some dudes in the back as well, banners on the side for the carrion manor. Like, yeah, we're, we're here to throw down now. Uh, you know what? These guys can bleed. So let's put on our let's put on our morning star. Let's do that, and uh, we'll mess them up like that. Here we go. Now there is a secret path that we could take over to the side. I would get around these guys, but I kind of wanted to. Uh, I wanted. I like to like try and like just go in like face first. Like let's let's do this thing and see if we can do it because that's pretty fun to me and uh oops way too early again on that roll and there's a section there's like one of the um there's like a finger reader too i think technically you know i'm gonna be maybe speaking a little out of turn but sometimes 
when they're giving you advice, they're like, oh yeah, you could do this, but like, wouldn't the true lord instead try to take like the most rigorous and difficult way instead of like trying to, you know, kind of cheat the way through, take the easy sneaky way, you know? And I kind of like that. Not that I feel like there's merits to both sides. Like why wouldn't you do the smart way, you know? And he dropped us an item, the Troll Knight's Sword. A great sword embedded with blue glintstone. Weapon of the trolls in service to the royal family of Caria. Called into service when the queen invoked an oath they swore. The trolls are treated as true knights of Caria and fight arm in arm with their human comrades. Which is a lot better than what it seems like we see in some of the other areas where they just seem to be so much lesser. But why would they be considered lesser? Like they're huge and mighty. And like we see with E.G., like, they can be smart and very learned. I mean, these trolls are doing spells as well. So, like, why are they often so looked down upon, it seems? And there's some pages. That makes sense. It's a noble family. They would have pages, right? To protect their masters. Now, right there's where the main attraction is at. We're going to go over here to the side because there are some other things for us to do here. When we come out on this side... We see that there are some pots down there and a bunch of, it's like a segment of kind of jumping puzzles, right? Areas for us to jump down, a uh, little thing. So there's something for us to find down this way and we're going to go find it. Speaking of jars, we have not found Alexander in a while because we haven't followed his path. He wanted to go east to a festival of war in Kaled. And honestly, I originally really intended to do a portion of that before we even fought Godric. But, you know, I got... There's just so much to do, and I just really kind of wanted to get the story moving. So I obviously didn't do that. So we're going to go back. We're going to see our boy Iron Fist Alexander here probably pretty soon. But why are there jars here, I wonder? I mean, why are there jars anywhere, I guess, and, you know? All right, so having dropped down a bunch more of the way, dealing with even more and more jars... We can see there is a section of wall that we are able to drop onto. And luckily I did not fall off there because I did not actually jump. And we find ourselves something. The Ash of War, Carrion Grandor. Which we find in the Carrion Sword. Except, you know, we can't take it out of there. It has to go in there. This is like we've learned just how to do that skill. And we could use it on any type of straight sword. If we go and look. Carrion Prestige embodied in the skill. You can usable usable on all swords with exception uh, to the colossal weapons. So, great swords, straight swords. Don't think daggers. Those aren't swords. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we got to travel back here, and then we're gonna go to the main fight. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and swap our weapons. No reason. Yeah, large opening. There seems to be a large pool of water up ahead of us. Oh, it's a big basin thing. Royal Knight Loretta. Now look at her headdress, right? So she's doing magic spells, right? But that helmet, it reminds me of the tree sentinels and even the sta the staves on those like bird tree spirits. Because it's got like a tree motif to it. So it's interesting that she's doing some kind of, um, like what you call it, like spells, like a sorcerer, specifically carrion sorcery. But she has some kind of like almost Erd tree sigil on the top. So I wonder why that is. Now her overall move moveset is very similar to the, uh, what you call it, to the tree sentinel. Even the music is kind of the same. Oh lord, stop that, please. Oh look, we've seen that boat before. We saw that with the uh, preceptor Miriam. So she, I mean, I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? But they, yeah, they got ties in there. Down she goes. Loretta's Great Bow and Ash of War, Loretta's Slash. All right. So maybe Loretta taught that Great Bow spell to the Preceptor, or, you know, like maybe she developed it in service with the Carrion Royal family, right? Used by Royal Knight. Loretta creates a magic great bow and fires a great arrow. Charging will enhance it. It is said that the bow was Loretta's favored weapon. Okay. 
and Loretta Slash, skill of Loretta, leap forward, imbuing the blade with glintstone, then descend, accelerating into a sweeping slash. We saw her do it a bit there in the fight too. And you can see it is kind of a picture of her in there too. But look at that. It's a big old like basin for like, I'm assuming they're for collecting starlight shards because that's whenever I find starlight shards are at the basin of these. But this thing is huge, like massive. Nothing back here though. Now this whole thing right here, there's a ton of chairs around this whole thing circled around which makes me think it's some kind of like meeting spot very shallow water stone ground and when you read the name of the location it's the royal moon gazing ground so it's for gazing at the moon so maybe what would happen is the moon would go overhead and be reflected in this circular shallow water still water and then they could gaze upon the moon right and maybe it was like a way of like communion. Now, we're going to call it here because now we've got a lot more to do over here that's pretty interesting. And even all along here. So we've more or less cleared out the entirety of the Carrion Manor. But we have yet to find Luna Princess Rani or her body or whatever we're supposed to find here, right? Because that's what Roger said is to check out here. That's where she's supposedly like people have been showing up and maybe she would have flipped back to. Uh, but thanks for checking it out. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, until the next one, take care.